Well, hallelujah, Lord God. <laughs> well, once again, good morning, good morning, good morning. What a glorious, glorious, hallelujah, glorious day it is of the Lord today. I apologize. Sometimes you forget just to turn the microphones on. Amen. Oh, hallelujah today. Oh, glory, glory to God. Today's message is do you bless? Amen. Do you bless? Do you bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. It says here in Psalm 103, verse 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you thankful? Are you thankful to God? Are you thankful? Do you thank God every single day just for being in your life? Amen? Hallelujah. All that is within me. In Luke 10 and 27, it says, And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy strength and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Amen? Oh, hallelujah today. Verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, don't forget any of his benefits who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Hallelujah, Lord God. (coughs) The Bible calls your iniquities, it calls them perversities. Amen? When you move aside from where God has you to be, when you move aside from the path that God has set you upon, sometimes you'll be walking along the path that God has you set upon, and you're asking yourself, this doesn't look safe. I can't see my next step. I can't see where to set my foot. And God says, I, hallelujah, have placed, I have placed your foot. The Bible says to trust in God with all our heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I remember reading the book series, The Chronicles of Narnia, and and there was a person who was, it was a person or a horse, or maybe a person on a horse, I don't know, but they had to get away from somebody that was after them, amen, And, and they couldn't see their path, it was dark, it was late, and they couldn't tell where they needed to be, and so all of a sudden a lion came and it attacked the horse, and it, and it scratched the rider and, it, and it, it swatted the horse and the horse ran for its life. But the lion was always right there beside him, always right there and growling and snarling and scaring him. But it was always right there and they couldn't seem to get away. And then finally at the end, they managed to get a little distance on the lion and they stopped and they were breathing and they were, they were wounded and they, and they were hurting, but they were safe. And it turned out that lion was the lion of the tribe of Judah. That lion, hallelujah, was in the book was Aslan, but it was being portrayed about Jesus. Amen. And that lion, hallelujah, had wounded the rider because of the wounds that the rider had caused somebody else in life. See, sometimes God will come and chasten you. Amen. The Bible says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Well, what do you mean, your rod and your staff? They're both a stick, right? Yes, but a staff is something that is used. It's got a hook on the end, and it's, it's used to reach around and get it around the neck of a lamb and lead it up out of a ditch and get it safe. But the staff or the rod, hallelujah, is used to whack the the wayward sheep when they're not where they need to be. Sometimes God is using a rod and sometimes God is using a staff. But you need to know where you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah today. So it says that he forgives all of our iniquity. See, that horse and that rider, he came by and he he wounded the rider because of harm that he had caused to somebody else. And he wounded and he, the horse because of the horse's foolish words. Amen. And it came out 
Hallelujah. When he got to the other side and they were safe and they realized the next morning when they awakened, they were too tired to go on. And they realized the next morning when they woke up and they looked back on the path that they had taken. And they looked and they saw that they had run a narrow little path on the side of the cliff. And the only reason they hadn't fallen off the cliff to their death was the fact that that lion always stayed on that side, running through the air itself, stayed on that side and protected them. Sometimes Jesus will run between you and danger and you feel like your life is over. You feel like everything's coming to an end. You feel like you can't move on another step. But God, oh hallelujah, God is there with you. His rod and his staff will indeed comfort you. It says in Psalm 103 and 4, who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He redeems your life from the pit. Hallelujah. Not merely destruction, not merely death, not merely a wounding. But he redeems your life from going down to the pit, down to Sheol, down to hell itself. He redeems your life. Hallelujah, so that Satan who was trying to destroy you was a, unable to do so. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. Jesus, the advocate, stood between you and certain death, stood between you and your heavenly Father who is holy and cannot allow sin in his presence. And none of us are that holy. None of us, apart from Christ, are that holy. So it says here, do you bless the Lord? Amen. Do you bless? Do you bless him every day when you realize that he protected your life from going down to the pit? He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, with favor, beauty, and tender mercies. Think about that word, tender mercies. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. God is not only not going to destroy you, but he is going to not destroy you in a loving, caring, cherishing way. Oh, yes, he may wound you from time to time when we decide we want to get cocky or arrogant or, or be the fool. He might wound us from time to time. But if we will humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, God will restore to you. It says in Psalm 103, verse 5, who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like an eagle. He satisfies your mouth with tob things, tob, T-O-B or T-O-V, amen? Hallelujah, the Bible said, hallelujah, Lord God, about Noah that Noah was tob, he was holy, he was holy, oh hallelujah, Lord God, he was holy. So it says that he satisfies your mouth with good things, the blessings of God add no sorrow. Oh, hallelujah. It's like you're poor and somebody says, I'm going to give you a car and, and they give you a, a Maserati or they give you a Rolls Royce and you're driving down the road in your Rolls Royce and you're so thankful you have a car. But then it comes the end of the year and you have to pay tax on the car and the car is worth as much as your house is. And the taxes break the bank. Well, that adds sorrow to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you have certain things or God does certain things in your life, he will have built you up to the place where you can support the gift and the blessing that he has given to you. See, we get this idea. God's just going to give me this. I've had people say, you know, God God is supposed to give me $10,000. I had a prophecy he was going to give me $10,000. What are you going to do with it? Huh? What are you going to do if God gave you $10,000 or $100,000 or a million dollars? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with it if you've never learned how to manage your finances? Hallelujah. Great wealth is a snare from the pit if you don't know how to manage it. Amen? Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. It says here, hallelujah, Lord God, that God will spread us out. There's a, 
Hallelujah. It says here, the blessings of God add no sorrow. Amen? Hallelujah, Lord God. What happened here? Somebody turned my little scriptures around here. Oh, there it is. My apologies. Hallelujah. Your youth is renewed like an eagle. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know anything about eagles? Eagles, they have their nests up in the mountains, in the peaks, in the crags. Hallelujah. On a lone tree, hanging out over a cliff thousands of feet. From certain death above, they'll build their, their nest right up there in that area where no, nothing can get to them. But there comes a time when an eagle is tired, amen? Hallelujah, the feathers are frayed and, is, and he's tired and he's weary and he'll go and he'll land in his nest for the last time for a while. Hallelujah, and he'll begin to pluck out all of his feathers. He'll begin to pluck them out. And he'll lay there in the nest and he's there in the cold and he's there in the rain and he's laying in the nest waiting for his renewal to come. And, and bit by bit, the new feathers come out. Oh, the shiny, strong, hallelujah, dependable feathers begin to grow out on the eagle. The Bible says your youth is renewed like an eagle. The eagle begins to move his wings around. He begins to feel the new strength in his wings, the new strength in those feathers. And finally, one day he climbs up. Hallelujah, he's tired, he needs, he's hungry, he needs to eat but he feels strong and he climbs up on the edge of that nest, up on the crag, up in the area above everything. And he jumps from it and he trusts and he opens up those brand new wings and he soars and he glides and he hunts and he begins to feed himself again. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Your youth, the Bible says, will renew with wings as an eagle. Do you feel sick today? Do you feel cast down? Do you feel like you can't make it another step? The Bible says that he will renew your youth. Hallelujah, that he will renew it. It'll be like the wings of an eagle. Psalm 103 verse 6 says, The Lord executes righteous acts and judgments for all that are oppressed. Hallelujah. People come against you all the time. People say evil things about you all the time. But he makes a hedge round about your life. The Bible says, hallelujah, that under his feathers, under his wings, like that eagle, under his wings you shall trust. You know, the little baby eagles, they're laying there in the nest and the mother lands and she takes her wings and she folds them over all of her children. And the rain is coming down and they were cold before, but now they're snuggled up against mom. And the water is just running off her wings. And she tucks her head underneath. And they're like one little happy family inside their home, covered by those giant, those magnificent wings. Amen? Genesis 12 and 3 says, I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God said that to Abraham. He said it to Abraham. You might say, yeah, but that's Abraham's blessing. Really? It says... And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The Bible tells us that we, hallelujah, are likened and have faithfulness with God and righteousness with God as faithful Abraham did. Psalm 103 verse 7, it says, And he made known his ways to Moses, his doings to the children of Israel. See, God spoke to Moses in the burning bush. How does he talk to you? Amen. How does God talk to you personally? God talks to each and every one of us. You do realize that, right? God, your Father, your Heavenly Father, speaks to each and every one of us. Amen? He spoke to him in a burning bush. In Genesis 17 and 1, Abram, Abram who we now know as Abraham, was 99 years old when the Lord appeared to him. See, I'd be wondering if I'm coming up on 99 years old and I've never heard from God before. I've never done anything to hear from God. I've never sought God's face. And when God, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be holy. And I will confirm my covenant between me and and you, and I will greatly increase your numbers. 
Well, what does that mean? That doesn't mean he's going to start making a whole bunch of copies of you. That means that he's going to bless your descendants. He's going to bless your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. He'll bless your nephews and nieces. Amen. He'll bless your cousins because of you. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Jacob, one day he was running away from his brother. He had stolen his brother's birthright and he was running away and he got tired and sleepy while he was running away and it was night. And the Bible says he took a stone and he laid it under his head. Amen. I don't know. I need a good, comfortable pillow to put under my head. But it says here that he put a stone under his head for a pillow. And it said he had a dream and he saw a stairway rising to heaven with its top reaching up into heaven. And he saw the angels of the Lord, the angels going up and down on the staircase. And the Lord stood above the giant staircase saying, I am the Lord. The, the God of your grandfather Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give the land on which you are laying to you and your descendants. And your descendants shall be like the dust of the earth. Amen. And you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And through you and through all your descendants, every family on the earth shall be blessed. Remember, I am with you. Are you listening to this? God is telling you this. It's not just for him. It's for you. He says, remember, I am with you. I will watch over you. Oh, hallelujah. He says, I will watch over you, Bishop J. I will watch, watch over you, John and, and Karen and, and Sandra and George and Fred and all the other people who have named the name of Jesus. I will watch over you. Remember, I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. You think about that. What does that mean wherever you go? Oh, hallelujah. Jonah said, if I am in the depths of the earth or down in the deepest part of the sea, God, you are there with me. If I make my bed in hell, you are still there. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. You can't get away from God's presence. You can get away from a relationship with God, a very foolish thing to do, but you can do it. But you can't get away from his presence because God is everywhere. It says, remember, I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go. I will also bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I do what I promise. Has God given you a promise? Oh, Rasha Kare Daraka. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. I told the Lord, Lord, one time told my late apostle Joseph Sims, he says, have all of your people write down who in the Bible they would like to be like, who their, their life might be like. And I wrote down, I wanted to be like Moses. Amen. And, and at the time I was in my 20s and I was thinking, you know, I don't want to die at an early age. I, I don't, I want to live. I want to be healthy. I want to be what God needs me to be. And I thought, well, Moses lived to be 120. And the other thing that I really was excited about is the Bible says God did not speak to Moses with mutterings and whisperings and, and hard sayings. God spoke to Moses face to face. They were face to face. They were friends. And they spoke together face to face. And I said, Lord, that's what I want. I want to be able to talk to you. Oh, I want to be able to talk to you, God, and hear you. And you hear me, Lord God, and we, we have communicate together. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But he says in Psalm 103, verse 8, the Lord is full of compassion. He is gracious. He is slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. You know, sometimes we, we Christians, we get a little upset because we feel that God doesn't punish sinners, people that have irritated us, people who have aggravated us, people who have gotten on our last nerve. We feel like God hasn't chastened them effectively or correctly, or God should punish them and wipe them out, amen? 
Could you imagine a world if God gave the power of life and death to the saints of God? Could you imagine that God says, if you curse this man, I will kill him? There'd be dead people all over the streets. See, you can't have authority like God has until you have righteousness and mercy and grace and forgiveness and a willingness to repent and to ask God to change your hard heart so that you're willing to be merciful and gracious even to those that hurt you. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. While you were yet in your sin, Christ died for you. He loved you that much. If you'd have been the only one, he still would have died for you. You have to receive it. You have to walk in it. You have to desire it. But it is there. It is a gift. It is being presented to you. And all you have to do is receive that gift. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. So it says that Yahweh, amen, Yahweh, what, what is hallelujah, Yahweh? Yahweh is that he is the creator, is the unpronounceable, yud Hey vav Hey, amen, the unpronounceable name of God, hallelujah, it is Yahweh Jireh, amen, which is Sometimes we say it Jehovah, Jehovah and Yahweh. Jehovah is the German way of pronouncing because in German, it would be Yahweh. In German, it's Yahweh. In Hebrew, it's probably Yahweh. But the name means, hallelujah, the self-existent one. God exists. You cannot say there is no God, because God himself will look at you like a little child, just look at you running around playing in the mud and go, yes, I exist. No, I don't think you exist, God. Oh, yes, I exist. And what is more, if you are willing to humble yourself before him, he is willing to show you how much he exists. Amen? But you have, hallelujah, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Remember, this is Yahweh or Yehovah. Hallelujah. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner. His banner over me is love. People, the devil is looking at you, trying to destroy you, trying to wipe you out, trying to cast you down. And he looks and he gets ready. He's going to swing and he's going to hit you. And he looks up and Jehovah, hallelujah, Lord God. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner. He looks up and he sees the banner of God's love hovering above you and he can't get through it. He can't get to you because God's banner is over you. Amen. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. Oh, hallelujah. Jehovah Mikodishkem. Hallelujah is the Lord who sanctifies. Jehovah Mishkodishkem, the Lord who cleans you up. Ha! The Lord who looks at you when you got angry with somebody because they fell short. And God says, it's okay. I've got this. I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to clean them up. I'm going to clean you both up. And I'm going to present you both to myself as a blessing, as a gift, a cleansed gift. Amen? You have, hallelujah, Jehovah Ra'ab. And it says, the Lord who sanctifies. Amen? It says, or the Lord is my shepherd. Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord, my righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. And one of my favorites, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is near to me. Oh, hallelujah. Is the Lord near to you today? Oh, hallelujah, because it's a blessing when the Lord is near to you. So God has an abundance of mercy. He has all his different names, all his different attributes are here for you if you will but humble yourself before him. You know, there have been some really powerful people who have been in office and they've done a good job in office, but nevertheless, they refuse to humble themselves or they fail. Maybe didn't refuse. Maybe it wasn't a part of their makeup and a part of who they were. It was hard for them to humble themselves. But when you remember, when you discover, 
When you discover how to humble yourself before God, hallelujah, you humble yourself before God. I think about George Washington, and George Washington would write down, I humble myself, I surrender myself to my God because I cannot do this job that they have given me to do. I cannot give this my all without God himself bringing it to pass. The people in the early part of the United States, they knew that they had to humble themselves. They, they knew that God would not bless a liar. God would not bless somebody who would go against them. God, or that God would not bless somebody who refused to walk in the righteousness of God. And so they began to learn how to at least, even if it was lip service, they would try to give lip service to God. It seems these days they don't even want to do that. They don't even want to acknowledge that God is. They have no prayer life. They have no understanding of who God is and what he expects from their lives. Amen? Hallelujah. Psalm 103, verse 9, He will not always chide with you, neither will he keep his anger forever. What does that mean? That means that God is not going to be fussing at you all the time. Oh, yes, when you act stupid, when you act, as we say, when you act a fool, when you act like some sort of nut, God will chasten you. He has a staff to lead you out of danger, but he's got a rod to apply it to the seat of correction. Amen? And it says here, he will not always fuss at you. So he was upset with you today. You cussed that person out. You treated that other person badly. And God made it abundantly clear. clear. Maybe your car broke down. Maybe something else happened to you. And you're like, God, why are these things happening? And he brings it back to your heart, what you said to that other person. And for a while you were angry, for a while you were frustrated, for a while you're like, I don't care. I am not, I don't care, they deserved it. And God will look at you, God will look at you and he'll go, yes, and so did you. Every day you do something that breaks my heart. Every day you do something that, that hurts me right here, says the Lord. Every day. But nevertheless, my mercies are new every morning. What about yours? Amen? My grace will come to you refreshed every single day. What about yours? Are you willing to be merciful every morning? Are you willing to be gracious every morning? If somebody forgives and God told, Jesus told Peter, he said, or Peter asked him, he says, how many times do I have to forgive that nut that keeps bothering me and bothering me and bothering me? Seven times? And Jesus said, not until 70 times seven. 70 times seven, 490 times. Can you forgive 490 times? And I can't really believe that there is anybody that has come to you more than that to frustrate you, aggravate you, and irritate you. It says he will not remain angry with you forever once you have repented. Oh, hallelujah. You can't continue to walk in the mess and expect God to change your outlook. You have to repent. The Bible says that we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you willing to confess your sins? Are you willing to look at that person who you're offended to and say, you know what? You're right. I'm wrong. Or maybe you were wrong, but I behave badly. And I'd like you to forgive me for how I behave toward you. Amen? Bible also says that a soft answer turns away wrath. Why is it that in this day and age, in these last few years, we seem to think that the only kind of answer we can give somebody is a hard answer? God says, why do you continue to store wrath up for yourself? You might say, but I'm angry. And God says, you don't want to see me when I'm angry. The book of Revelation explains what happens when I'm angry, and you don't want to see that. Psalm 103, verse 10, he hath not dealt with us after our sins, amen, nor rewarded us after our iniquities. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Our sin should have caused God to wipe this earth clean of all life and start it again. 
but instead God chose to show us his grace. Amen? Psalm 103 and 11, for as heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. If you fear what God can do to you, if you fear him and it keeps you from acting stupid, God says, oh hallelujah, that his reward to you is great mercy. I don't know about you, <laughs> hallelujah, Lord God, but I know I have flaws, I know that I fail, and it is exciting to me, it is exciting to know that God has great mercy for me every single day because I fear him. Psalm 103 and 12, as far as the east from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Hallelujah. Amen. East and west. Well, for me right now, that's east behind me. West is ahead of me. God takes your sins and he casts them in opposite directions and he will not look at them again. It's not like the earth where they wind up going around the planet and come up and, and land right on your lap again. No, it is not like that. It is like God's creation that it continues forever. It never ceases. And God says, I will cast it away and I will never draw it back to look at it again. When you go to heaven, you don't have to, you're not going to see those things that you have repented of. You might see those things you have not repented of because the Bible says that God, hallelujah, he will show us our life. He will show us how we did. He may not, you may see all those missed opportunities that you didn't see or didn't want to see and didn't do what God told you to do. But God will never take those things that you have repented of and throw them back in your face because they are cleansed. They are purified. They are forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 103, 13, as a father has pity for his children, so the Lord has pity for those that fear him. See, a child fears their father because they know their father will chasten them. Their father will paddle their behind when they don't act right. And, but your father also wants what's best for you. If he is a loving father, hallelujah, and Ab, Abba, father, is another word for love. And it says that he strives to help you as a dear child who has stumbled. That is what God does for you because you fear him. Amen. And it says here in Psalm 103, 14, he knows our frame and remembers that we are dust. He sees you. He knows you. And he knows that you are nothing but dust. <laughs> It doesn't matter if your husband gets on you because he doesn't think you did what you ought to do in the marriage. It doesn't matter if the wife gets on you because she doesn't think that you did what you should do in the marriage. It doesn't matter if your kids are on you, your parents are on you. What matters is this. God, your heavenly father, knows that you are but dust. He is not going, hallelujah, to expect things of you that you can't do. The only time he will expect you to do something that you can't do is when he already knows he's given you the power to do it. When he already knows he's lined everything up, line upon line, precept upon precept, so that you can step into it and move in victory. Amen? Hallelujah. Psalm 103, 15, as a man, as for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, he flourishes. Have you ever looked, gone out, oh, maybe two or three days after a rain and gone out in a, in a field, amen, and looked out over all the wildflowers and they're just coming up, even in the desert where they have snakes and scorpions, even in the desert, after one of those rare times of rain and all of a sudden the flowers come out through the ground and they're beautiful. And two days later when the heat comes back, they're burnt down to nothing and they're gone. They just rise up. And that is us. We live for a brief span here on earth. We are as a flower, as grass. We, shut, we shout up and come up and we have great beauty before God. And in verse 16, and then the wind passes over us and it is gone and the place thereof shall know it no more. Life 
passes over us. Life knocks us down. We live our life. Oh, hallelujah. I was thinking about my late apostle today, and I was thinking about some of the meetings we had at church and some of the meetings where pastors from all over the country, pastors from all over the country would gather together, and, and some of them even from Mexico, and they would gather together at the church, and we would have fellowship, and we would eat together, and we would show the love of God to one another. I think about that. I looked at him, and he, and he grew, and he flourished, and you could see he was almost like Moses, where his face was almost lit from within because of the anointing of God upon his life. And then one day he was gone. One day he was no more. But for that moment, for that time, we could experience the grace of God, the love of God, and the joy of God through that man that gave himself so fully to work the work of the kingdom of God. We, could, we experienced it. Churches were born. Churches flourished. Amen. Many of them are still going today simply because of the seed that that man planted in a fertile ground with the power and the anointing and the love and the grace of God. And I have to ask you a question today. Is that in you? Is that seed there within you? It's not going to last forever. It might not last long, but is it in there for you? Amen? Amen. Verse 17, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those that fear God and his righteousness to their children's children. The mercy of God is upon you forever. Forever. Why? Because you fear God. It's not because you're a genius. It's not because you're stronger than anybody else. It's not because you're more healthy than somebody else. It is because you fear You fear God. Amen. And because of that, his mercy is upon you forever. And his righteousness to your grandchildren. His righteousness will cover your family, will continue to, if you never prayed for him again, God's righteousness, because you feared him, would continue to draw them in. Amen. Verse 18, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his laws to do them. His righteousness will cover two generations of your family. Why? Because you loved him and you gave your all. There was a, a Russian that went up into heaven. Amen. I mean, he went up and he was circling the earth in his, in his spaceship. And he says, now I know there is no God because I am up in heaven. And he is not here. What he didn't know was that when he got inside that spacecraft, God was there. When they launched him and he was trying to hold on to everything, God was there. When he was circling the earth, God was there. And when he fired those retro rockets to slow himself down, so hopefully he would come back to earth and land safely and live. God was there. God's question to you is, do you fear him today? Amen? Do you fear the Lord today? Oh, hallelujah, today. In verse 20, Psalm 103, verse 20, Bless the Lord, ye angels of his, ye mighty in strength, fulfilling his word, hearkening unto the voice of the Lord. These are the ministering angels of God, the ones that, Jacob saw going up and down the ladder to heaven. Amen. They are great in power, mighty in ability. Amen. They fulfill the word of God. They hearken unto his voice. They listen for every word that comes from God as we are supposed to do. They do. Hallelujah, Lord God. The mighty angels. In verse 21, Psalm 103, 21. Bless the Lord, all ye hosts. Ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, all ye hosts, the heavenly host, the warriors, those that are going to fight the battle, the final battle. Bless the Lord, all ye hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Do you do the pleasure of God today? 
Hallelujah. Do you do his will? When God touches your heart, do you do his will? Amen. Bless the Lord, all ye his works in places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Even the works of God, even the things that he has done are alive. They speak, they accomplish. The Bible says he sent his word out and it did not return to him void. It accomplished what he set them to do. Amen? Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. The works of God bless his home. In all areas of his dominion, bless his name, excuse me, in all areas of his dominion, bless the Lord, oh my soul. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Do you bless? Do you bless the Lord? Do you want to walk in his victory and his favor and in his love? Then bless the Lord. Tell God how much you love him today. Tell him how precious he is to you today. And tell him that you don't ever want to be without him at any moment, at any time. I want to thank you for hearing this word today. I will be probably be posting it later on, on YouTube as well. I guess I'll stitch those two sections together that got broken in half. But I want to thank you for coming to hear the word today. I want to, I hope that you have listened to both halves of this, not just the little short piece at the end. But I want to thank you so much, Halo Roshad Daraka, for hearing God's word. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you too will bless the Lord. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, I thank you for love and grace, favor and mercy today. I thank you for your promises today. I ask you to be a true miracle, Lord God, in the lives of your children and all those that call out to you, Lord God, that you will bless them in the generations, Lord God, those that have been faithful to you. I thank you for your grace, your love, mercy. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you because you love us and cherish us. And you work so hard, Lord God, to bring us into that place you desire us to be. We thank you for that today. And we ask you today, to continue to be a miracle in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray until we meet again. God bless you.